Marcus Conte. My name is Marcus Conte. <laughs> Marcus Conte reporting. Do some, uh, I think, a little, uh, little deep dive into here. Uh, it's election. Is it election season already? Are we already looking at 2020, man? Because there's some good commercials out. Fucking God damn. God damn. So I'm going to throw three names up. Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, and Donald Trump. One of these contestants will be the next president of the United States. Nobody else. Pick one of those because that's who it is. Can't be making his predictions. Making his predictions. So let's look at some of um, some amazing uh, work. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard. I guess we'll start there because a lot of people don't know who uh, Tulsi Gabbard is, right? She's the. Um, I think she's still in her thirties. Lives in. Uh, she's from Hawaii. She's the congresswoman from Hawaii. So, so if you want your first woman president, here's your chance. Here's your chance. War veteran. She went to Iraq. She's uh, against. Uh, uh, insurgency wars. She's she's uh, for single payer universal health care, free college tuition at city and state universities. Uh, she's for all the all the Sanders. She's like Sanders 2.0, right? She's the she's the female version, the younger millennial version of Bernie Sanders. So let's look at uh, let's just check it check it out, man. Let's check out um, Tulsi Gabbard's. Uh, she she put out two really good. Um, Really good videos. Check this shit out, man. Like so many of you, it is painful and disheartening to see how much divisiveness is being fomented by those who wish to tear us apart. We have people in positions of power who are not thinking about the well-being of the people and our planet. Where is that conversation about the needs of our people? Where is the conversation about peace? Every time we launch these interventionist regime change wars, it is not only our veterans who pay the price for that. Every single one of us pays the price. We have spent trillions of your taxpayer dollars to pay for these wars, taking those dollars away from our communities and our people who need them right here at home. We are the ones who have the power to make change. It takes every single one of our hands, our hearts, and our voices, motivated by this love and aloha, to take on those forces and those obstacles that can seem too great to overcome. There is no force more powerful than love. This is how we come together as Americans. This is why we fight for the future that we hope will be so much brighter for those that we care about, for the country that we love. <laughs> that was touching. That was really fucking touching, man. Oh my God, it brought a tear to my eye when she said, where is the conversation about peace? <laughs> I gotta, uh, you gotta love her, man. Right, Tulsi Gabbard, man. She's the shit. Uh, she's um, real powerhouse, real powerhouse, man. I love her, fucking Tulsi Gabbard. Let's listen. Let's watch one more, one more Tulsi Gabbard, and then we'll watch, watch some Bernie, watch some Trump. I know who I am. I know what I stand for, and I know my purpose in life, and why I'm in this fight. I've been through battles before. As long as we are focused um, on our purpose of service, uh, then no matter how many arrows they throw at us, no matter how many attacks they lob at us, there's no reason to be afraid. They're attacking because they're afraid. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what's happening. Yeah. They're afraid of being exposed. They're afraid of the truth. They're afraid of the power of the people, recognizing that we won't be blindly led or abused or cheated. So every time you see these bad news stories come out or you see these things happening, first of all, notice that it's almost never about the substance of the issue. It is almost always about name calling and cheap attacks because they can't argue on the substance. I look forward to those substantive debates. We are going to have different ideas on issues. That's what our politics should be about. But when you see those attacks come, know it's because they're scared and know that what we're doing is working. Wow, so there you go. Never They never attack us on, on uh, substance because on substance they lose, right? What is our substance? We'll talk about that. But um, 
return. They they attack. They attack because they are afraid. They are afraid of the truth. Ooh, she's a truther. Wow, Tulsi Gabbard's a truther. But what about the what about the subtle? So she's she's for as I said, Bernie Sanders. She's get money out of politics. She's for my platform. Look, read my Senate platform down below. That's the same shit, really. Get money out of politics. Deflate the billionaire class. Free health care for for all. Single payer, Medicare for all, free college tuition at city and state universities. What else? Reduce the military spending against an enemy we don't have. All right, so Tulsi Gabbard, man, these are some good candidates, right? All right so let's um, let's revisit Bernie Sanders. We'll relitigate Bernie. Take it away, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. President Trump said tonight, "We are born free, and we will stay free." Well, I say to President Trump, people are not truly free when they can't afford to go to the doctor when they are sick. We must keep freedom alive in our souls. People are not truly free when they cannot afford to buy the prescription drugs they desperately need. People are not truly free when they are unable to retire with dignity. People are not truly free when they are exhausted because they are working longer and longer hours for lower wages. People are not truly free when they cannot afford a decent place in which to live. People certainly are not free when they cannot afford to feed their families. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said in 1968, and I quote, this country has socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for the poor, end quote. The problems of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. What Dr. King said then was true, and it is true today, and it remains absolutely unacceptable. We are considered far and away the hottest economy anywhere in the world. Despite what President Trump says, this is not a hot economy when 43% of households can't afford to pay for housing, food, childcare, healthcare, transportation, and a cell phone without going into debt. Trump said tonight that we should govern not as two parties, but as one nation. I agree. But Trump's agenda of providing tax breaks to billionaires while throwing millions of Americans off of health insurance is the exact opposite of what the American people want. If we are serious about reinvigorating our democracy and increasing voter turnout and bringing young people into the political process, let us bring our people together to take on and defeat a ruling class whose greed is destroying our nation. The billionaire class must learn that they cannot have it all. Our government belongs to each and every one of us, not just the few. Together, let us fight for economic, social, racial, and environmental justice. Let us end unbridled greed. Let us create the kind of America that we know we can become. <clears throat> so Bernie ain't farting around, man. Bernie's like serious about the issues, right? Looking very presidential and unbridled greed, right? He's it's he's on message. He's on the, he's he's all the breaks go to the ta to the billionaire class. He's my man. I mean, he's talking about, you know, he's not talking about giving tax breaks to the to the billionaire class. He's talking about getting money out of politics, right? He's talking about the real shit, the real shit that rocks the boat. Go after Wall Street. He didn't say anything. I didn't hear any fucking deep state. Oh, you got to, oh, it's the CIA and the FBI and the spooks and the, and the Hillary Clintons and, the, and the, the Russians. He didn't say any of that shit. He said it's the billionaire class. Damn, the fucking banks. It's, it's, it's the monopoly. It's the oligarchy. It's billionaires that have so much, so much power and so much wealth. Right? That's what he talked about, right? And you hold that up to, to, to Trump. What is Trump offering? Trump is saying, we're going to lock her up. Uh, lock who up? You're not going to lock up anybody. Nobody's getting locked up, right? You might get locked up. Uh, drain the swamp. 
drain the swamp. How, where drain the swamp? You drain the swamp and you replaced it with a new swamp. You replaced it with Pompeo, the, the CIA, and Abrams, and, and uh, fucking you, all the swamp creatures, man. Fucking, you got Goldman Sachs. You got uh, 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 Steve Mnuchin, the, the, the guy, the Goldman Sachs guy. You made him secretary of, of the treasury. You put the treasury, Donald Trump, you put the treasury in the hands of Goldman Sachs, the most outrageously dangerous, corrupt organization on the face of the planet, right? One of them, anyway. Goldman Sachs. You made him the secretary of the treasury, right? He's got a direct line. Goldman Sachs has a direct line to your pocket. Well, good job. What else? Bring back jobs to America. How? You where? You gave all the you gave corporate tax rate tax breaks to corporations and what they do they just they put the money in their pocket they do they do stock buybacks so that they can give themselves incentive programs incentive packages right they give everybody a bonus right that's that's what they do and they take the and any excess money they don't trickle it down because there is no trickle down trickle down economics is a joke it's a, it's fake right so so they you know so they so that's what's going on there you know fucking fucking that's your money man that's your money man trump is state trump is trump, trump is, <laughs> uh so so what else is going on so what's holding these guys back man what's the big obstacle what's the big fucking obstacle that's holding back sanders and tulsi gabbard why will the democratic party never allow these two people to to enter the political discourse as democrats why because because they're fucking, they mean business, right? Both of these people have their f finger on the pulse, right? Uh, now, you, you, I know, I know Bernie Sanders has a, he, he went along with the Russian collusion. He sucked Hillary Clinton's tit after the election. I, I know, I know you can, and I know you're going to say he's corrupt. He bought himself a country house. He took, he took all the money from the millennials and said, fuck you. I know everything, right? His wife's corrupt. She's she did a bogus deal in the college she worked for, and and and, and he sucks. And but what's the big one, right? See, all that shit is <clears throat> is really irrelevant and open to. Uh, I mean, Sanders argu arguably stayed in the discussion because he is running, and uh, he he will he has the policy, right? I, I'm not in love with the guy. I'm in love with the idea, the policies, right? <clears throat> to have. Those kind of policies at the top of the pyramid, the president of the United States talking about income and wealth inequality, the fact that 40% of our country is living in abject poverty, that people don't have, you know, $400 to their name, all those statistics, right? To have that voice in the White House is so fucking inspiring, right? Right? Now, someone else, I mean, Tulsi Gabbard or Bernie Sanders are both saying that. Now, if somebody else comes along and says that, right, do we, do we mean it? Do they mean it? No, I don't know. I know that these two people mean it so far, and I know Trump doesn't mean it. That's for sure, because he's already proved he doesn't mean it. So, but what's the thing holding the back? What's the one thing? What's that one fucking smear? What's the big smear? Say it. Say, 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 say it with me. So, 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 socialism, right? Socialism, right? That they've weaponized the term, right? And stick it on them, right? Because Sanders called himself a, a democratic socialist, right? So now they take all the horror of socialism or whatever it means. Nobody even knows what it means. If you know what socialism means, write it down in the term. Stop saying you're against socialism when you don't know what the fuck it means, right? Write it down. Write it the fuck down. Write it down. Write it down down there. What do you think socialism is? Big mouth. Right. Now let's look at uh, let's 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 just breeze by. I'll do some. Uh, there's some some good clips about. Uh, there's good good Sanders clips and good uh, socialism clips. I'll be back. Once there was a system of government called socialism. It was so awful that everyone died. <laughs> socialist trademark Bernie Sanders uh, socialism does not work socialism does lead to recession uh, you know you're killing and eating your pets uh, when you say commie little socialist you sound like Trump when he called Sanders a socialist slash communist they're not the same thing that's like saying dog slash pigeon 
Communism is the opposite of capitalism, whereas socialism recognises that capitalism results in inequality. So sometimes the state has to step in. That's all socialism is. It's not fucking communism, it's compromise. Yeah, you still get to do business, make money, have ambitions, but when there are people making billions whilst others literally starve, the state is there to curb those excesses. Okay, it's helping poor and vulnerable people. It's less people living on our streets. It's legal aid, a socialist ideal that means everyone has affordable access to our justice system. Who in their right fucking mind thinks that's a bad idea? I watched Hillary last night with, we're gonna give this, we're gonna give that, we're gonna give that. She, the poor woman, she's gotta give everything away because this maniac that was standing on her right is giving everything away, so she's following. That's what's happening. This socialist slash communist, okay? Nobody wants to say it. She's standing there listening to this guy. He's going to tax you people at 90%. He's going to take everything. And nobody's heard the term communist. But you know what? I call him a socialist slash communist, okay? Because that's what he is. You don't consider yourself a capitalist, though. Do I consider myself part of the casino capitalist process by which so few have so much and so many have so little, by which Wall Street Greed and recklessness wreck this economy? No, I don't. I believe in a society where all people do well, not just a handful of billionaires. Socialist, 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 socialist. The jetzt durch die Länder geht. This road to socialism, uh, yeah, their policies are socialist. We would have been less socialist during the Clinton administration than we are today under Obama. Most of the people who are writing about socialism don't know anything about it either. Now, as far as socialism is concerned, that term has been so uh, evacuated of content over the last century that it's hard even to use. I mean, the Soviet Union, for example, was called a socialist society. And it was called that by the two major propaganda uh, uh, operations in the world, uh, the US, the Western one, and the Soviet one. They both called it socialism for opposite reasons. Uh, the West called it socialism in order to defame socialism by associating it with this uh, miserable tyranny. But if I'm a normal politician who needs to raise 20, 50 million dollars, where am I going to go? I'm going to sit down with the wealthy. I'm going to go to the country club. I'm going to do my fundraisers at fancy resorts. And I get to know those people. But that's the whole point of this corrupt uh, campaign finance system. If you're going to contribute a million dollars to my super PAC, well, maybe that you're a hell of a nice guy and you like to participate, or maybe you want something. I think you want something. And you and a guy are going to become really good buddies so I can do your bidding. In other words, the millionaire class and the billionaire class increasingly own the political process and they own the politicians who go to them for money. Senator Sanders, are you charging that these multi-billion dollar corporations that run the media might be part of the establishment? That's a hard one, Jake. Why do you ask me such hard, difficult questions? <laughs> that is the establishment. You are paying for it is actually punitive. You're going to punish uh, people who make money. You're going to punish the financial district. You're going to uh, punish and wind up changing the idea of an open and free economy because you're going to punish them for speculating. Now, I believe that we counted four punishes in there. <laughs> now, there's a lot there, right? So, so who's, who's got the better message? Who has... Who has the better message? Right? For me, I know, I know. Forget about the person. Forget it. Put the put the the principle before the personality, right? Trump has the personality. Trump is the character. Trump is the is the great entertainer. <clears throat> Although Sanders is running a close second. Sanders is pretty funny. He's a pretty funny old man, right? But but putting the <clears throat> principle before the personality, you have to go with Trump and Tulsi, uh, Tulsi and and Bernie, based on the, the 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 content of their of their policy, which is for you, right? It's a policy about the people, not about you know insurgency wars and and you know look at Venezuela. Trump Trump is fucking he's the same. He's the same same. He's counterinsurgency wars. They're, they're, they're go down to Venezuela. They're socialists. Take the oil. Take the oil because they're socialists. They don't know what they're doing. They're eating their dogs and their cats and they're fucking, look at them, man. Grab the oil. Get the oil. Here's a fucking hamburger. Get the oil. Get the fucking oil, man. That's what Trump's all about, right? But these, here's, here's some <clears throat> two people with integrity, two people that are, 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 are 
laying it out for the American people. Who would you rather have at the top of that pyramid? Someone, someone talking about trickle down economics and the shit never trickles down, or would you rather have someone, uh, someone who who has a vision, a new deal for the future, a, a new deal for America, to to deflate uh, the billionaire class, to address income and wealth inequality, to call out poverty in our great nation. So it's something to think about, man. I, I was, uh, you know, who I'm, what side of the fence I'm on, right? Not, not because, I mean, look, I don't think that, I, I don't think that the president of the United States actually has any legitimate executive power outside of, you know, starting wars and and using bombs and such. Like, I don't think that they. I think that the president has become kind of, sort of, impotent in financial reform. I think it's deeply uh it's a deep problem within congress and the, the senate now but nonetheless when you have see if you would have had uh, just imagine for a second a uh a you know a state of the union you saw trump up there talking about we will never be a socialist country right and he's 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 kissing he's blowing kisses to buzz Aldrin up in the uh to the fucking fake moon land fake moon guy uh, he's blowing kisses to, to fake moon guy up in the in the balcony, right? Could you imagine if, just for a second, you had a president of the United States calling out the banks from that podium saying that, that they will pay their fair share of taxes, that we will end the corruption. Could you imagine if he locked up a few of them, actually actually enforced laws to, you know, antitrust laws and, and, and stop them from looting the country? Could you imagine if, if Goldman Sachs went up the stairs handcuffed, right? And and that was coming from the message of this of of the president of the United States, a president that uh, believes in the people, that has a actual functioning policy of actual idea on how to fix it. I think we'd be in a in a much much better place uh, place than we are right now. So my name is Marcus Conti reporting. What's your thoughts? Put your thoughts down below.